This is your one link. You can take your two cards together. The announcement to implement a charge on disposable carrier bags at supermarkets as per the recommendation submitted by the Citizens Work Group after consultation with the NEA and members of the public is a move that is highly anticipated and to some viewed with some hesitation. Such a solution has already been implemented in various countries and generally attained success in reducing the usage of plastic bags. We likewise hope to see a positive outcome in early 2023 when charges for disposable carrier bags in large supermarkets are made a legal requirement. In Singapore, supermarket retailers such as the NTC Fairprice and Don Don Donkey have already taken the initiative and begun to implement charges for their disposable bags. While such measures look to disincentivize shoppers from using disposable plastic carrier bags offered in stores, there are some who have brought up that Singaporeans have always been recycling supermarket bags, using them as trash bags, and that such a model might create a situation where consumers take more bags than needed after paying the fee for them. It is with this concerns that we would like to seek clarification concerning the proposed charging model when implementing the mandatory charge for carrier bags at supermarkets. My second cut. As a smart nation of digital natives, we have become increasingly reliant on electronic devices to allow our society to function. Incorporating more of such devices into our lives naturally means that we generate more of such e-waste. Waste that contains hazardous materials and poses a health and environmental risk if not managed. With the implementation of the Nationwide Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme for e-waste in July 2021, we have taken steps to regulate the disposal of such waste by placing greater responsibility on the producers and retailers of such products to ensure that the items ranging from our handphones to our light bulbs will be handled when they reach end of life. With the current e-waste collection and disposal scheme having been in place for half a year, we would like to seek clarification on whether the scheme has contributed to the increase in e-waste collection. Furthermore, we also seek assurance of the effects of the present scheme that has on the ability to recycle the e-waste that we have generated.